New York City, police officers responding to mental health crisis is a huge issue. There are nearly 200,000 mental health calls in a year. In the last eight years, 19 people have been killed due to police encounters while experiencing a mental health crisis. Out of those 19 people, 16 were people of color. Yeah, happy birthday, Montessor. Hope you're having a blessed year already. And now it's your birthday, so I hope you feel extra blessed. My cousin's name is Herb Pierre. He was diagnosed with bipolar and schizophrenia disorder. On December 20th, 2020, a call was placed to 911 about an individual pacing the subway station with a knife and a gun. NYPD arrived on the scene and encountered Erd. They immediately labeled him EDP, an emotionally disturbed person, and they knew that he needed help. He did not really have a gun on him. The police shouted commands at him to drop the knife. They tased him a few times, about maybe 15 minutes into the encounter. NYPD claims that Erd ran towards them with the knife, so they shot at him 10 times, killing him. My family were heartbroken. Upon reviewing the body-worn camera footage, we actually believe that Erd was running away in fear because the police officers were not there to help him. If somebody is experiencing a mental health crisis, the only option is to call 911. No matter what, the police comes. That's how it works in New York City. That's how it works in the vast majority of the state. And what's wrong with that? People are literally dying. We started out with our colleagues at Correct Crisis Intervention Today New York City thinking about how to transform the mental health crisis response. We are also working on the education front, talking with legislators, talking with elected officials, having demonstrations, surveying the community. We want to replace the police as responders with a very highly trained emergency medical technician and one peer, an individual with lived mental health experience who's been there, literally. When a mental health call comes into the city, the city responds by sending armed police officers and against the will of the person, detain them and bring them to a hospital, even if there is no danger to anybody involved. A major piece of litigation that NILPI is handling is the Bayerga case, where we represent six individuals plus some community groups who have been improperly detained by the police and take it to hospitals against their will. The Bayerga lawsuit challenges the New York Police Department policy of assigning police officers to respond to mental health calls and crises. One of our plaintiffs, Neil Amitai, is a homeless New Yorker. One day while he fell asleep in a subway station with his girlfriend, he woke up to police officers beating him and they transported him to a psychiatric facility to have an evaluation done against his will. Now, Mr. Amitai is someone who was not experiencing a mental health crisis at the moment. He did not present a danger to himself or others. However, he experienced an extreme deprivation of his liberty. I am a peer and that's a person who has lived mental health experience. I get to help people to let them know that they're not alone and that there is such a thing as recovery. I was initially diagnosed with bipolar depression and I was in my house. There was a knock at the door and there were eight to nine police officers with guns and one told me that I had to go with him because someone in my home had called 911, said that I had a knife. I didn't have a knife. I was scared to death, so I followed them and their orders, and then they dropped me off at Bellevue Hospital, which was a nightmare. Based on my situation, I may not have been shot, but I could have been if I would have made one wrong move. Through the Bayarga lawsuit, we hope that the New York Police Department changes its policy. Instead of police officers responding to mental health crises, health care providers and trained peers are the ones to respond. This would help reduce the risk of harm to individuals as well as provide more of a just and equitable society. This is a fundamental issue of equality and justice for everybody in the city. There are many other cities across the country that have adopted this approach very successfully. And I am really hopeful that this partnership will lead to a great outcome for those people in New York who really need us. So one of our critical advocacy efforts has been to get legislation in place on the state front to transform the 
the mental health crisis response. We work together with a host of other advocates and individuals with lived mental health experience sitting around the table with elected officials to bring about proposed legislation. We were able to have legislation introduced known as Daniel's Law, named after Daniel Prude, an individual who experienced a mental health crisis and was killed at the hands of the police. Daniel's Law is the answer to mental health crisis response transformation because it includes no police response except in the rarest of circumstances. A health base, peer response, run by the community 24-7, a very quick response time, just like you respond to other crises. Right now we have over 30 co-sponsors on the bill. We're going to see that legislation passed within the next year, and it will literally save lives. At New York Lawyers for the Public Interest, community priorities drive our work, focusing us on some of the most urgent issues of our time around health, immigrant, disability, and environmental justice. We activate community-led campaigns that combine the power of law, organizing, and the private bar to achieve lasting change. Nopi and our partners are committed for the long haul. With the leverage of Daniel's Law and Albany, our Bayarga class action and federal court, mobilizing advocates and community members across the state working towards achieving lasting change for New Yorkers in crisis. One of the things that I think is really unique about New York lawyers is our ability to work very flexibly and very creatively and how we can leverage the resources of public interest organizations, of community-based organizations, and also of the private bar. NILPI formed the Pro Bono Clearinghouse, which is a means of getting firms like mine and 80 other member firms actively involved in pro bono where you can represent individuals or communities that are in need of legal services. And because of its approach, NILPI is a recognized leader in working for equal justice for New Yorkers. Working with NILPI has been a fantastic experience. They're great partners, and I am really hopeful that this partnership will lead to a great outcome for those with mental disabilities. I would like to thank NILPI because they're very instrumental in getting a lot of things done with Daniel's Law and CCIT. They're in the lawsuit and making sure that we get what we need. I want to thank Nilpi for acknowledging me and my family and Earn fighting for justice in his honor, transforming mental health crisis so that fatalities like Earn don't happen anymore. We had the corner of Utica Avenue and Eastern Parkway co-named to Earn Pierre Way, which is where he lived his whole life.